Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. I've just been sorting some photos and video uh, in the office and I found this guy, which was in my still camera. And it's actually a micro SD out of my GoPro. And on here, I found a video that I haven't shared with you guys yet. And it's actually a short session that I did with my dad fishing on Christmas morning. So I thought, oh, why not? We might as well give it a share. It's got a bunch of tips and techniques on there that hopefully get you hooked up to a fish. And it also just reinforced to me the fact that, you know, you've sometimes got to make the most of those little short windows of time that you've got to get out there and have a fish. So we actually woke up early on Christmas morning. No one else was up. So we threw the kayaks in, snuck out for a quick fish, and we were still back in time to set up the tables and chairs and get everything ready for Christmas Day. So hopefully the opportunity arises for you guys to get out for a couple of quick sessions and get stuck into a fish. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy this long lost Christmas morning session. All the best with the fishing. Morning folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. We might be a little bit mad, we're not sure, but Merry Christmas, it's Christmas morning. We've snuck out, everybody's still asleep, so we've snuck out to make the most of a, a quick little session. It's a bit drizzly, so hopefully not too much water on the lens of the camera, th camera through this one. All right, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you guys. Let's see if we can find a few fish and hopefully give you a few tips for what we're doing on this morning session. So to kick things off, we're basically just rolled up on a flat. This flat is sandy, rubbly bottom, and then it goes into some solid weed. And that's what we're really looking for, is a bit more weed to work over the edge. It's then gonna drop off into a bit deeper water and then come up on a bit of another weedy ledge. So hopefully we can find a flatty or a brim or a trevally or something and uh, get a bend in the rod. Cheers. All right, housekeeping is done. First order of business is to crack a Pepsi Max. Now we're ready to catch a fish. Like Ronnie said a second ago, we'll kick things off with the favorite. We're gonna fish that quarter ounce one -o, TT Lewis Demons, and we're gonna fish that two and a half inch slimy, centered up. Always put a bit of scent on there. We've got overcast conditions, which is generally pretty good for fishing, because Provides the fish a bit more cover. There's not so much glare. The water's a bit murky from a little bit of rain we've had. So everything's in our favor. We've got a run in tide, about two hours of run in. So we're gonna fish about two hours of run in, one hour or so of run out. Back in time to set up table and chairs and get ready for Chrissy. First cast of the day. It's not always a good idea to catch a fish on the first cast of the day. Sometimes you don't catch any more after that. So we want the first cast not to get eaten. Perfect start. <laughs> we've got overcast low light conditions. So straight up, what we've done is I've tied on a motor oil, Slim Swims, and Ronnie has tied on a Midnight Oil colored Slim Swims. So what they're both UV reactive plastics so what we're doing is making the most of any UV light that's here to help the fish find these things, give them a bit of pop. The other colour that we could go for is a, is a dark silhouette type colour to help it stand out in this low light conditions. Getting a little bit of weed there, that's a good sign. So we're just throwing long casts across the flat, retrieving, covering ground. Prospecting until we find a patch of fish. A long cast. You can let it hit the bottom if there's not too much weed there. Hop it up off the bottom, get that slow roll going. If you want to add a few shakes throughout the retrieve, we can. Just to try and create some interest. And we're drifting up on a crab pot here. I don't know if it's an active crab pot or an old crab pot. But my mate Sean calls crab pots burly buckets, and that's how they work at times, attracting fish with the baits that are in them. So you'll often get bait attracted, and then you'll get predators attracted to the crab pot. 
There's also the structure of the pot and the rope and the float and that sort of thing that attracts bait as well and then attracts predators. Hey, hey fish on! Good work, mate. Ronnie's on. We'll rip over and see what he's got. The grunter, is it? Little grunter. Yeah, oh yeah. That's promising. If he's around too, he might have some big mates around. There you go, Grunter. You can tell why they're called Grunter. Grunting away. <laughs> yeah, they're solid, chunky fish, eh? Yeah, he's a solid fella. And away. We'll get out of your way, mate. Alright, alright. I just had a rattle too, so. Did you? Yeah, it'd be good if it was those guys. Big ones, eh? We'll get out of your way a bit. Yeah, you, they go hard, eh, those guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, as soon as it hit the water, that just got drilled. Oh, what is that? <clears throat> Might be a trev or something. That was insane. As soon as that hit the water, it got absolutely drilled. Straight over that way that was. Hopefully he's got some mates. Unless I've landed on a turtle or a dugong. <laughs> no, nah, it feels like a fish. It's running out towards deeper water. Might be a trev. It's got some grunt. I did not even get to wind the handle then. As soon as I lifted the rod from the cast, that fish had nailed that as soon as it hit the water. Got a bit of go about it. A lot of bait just here, Dad. Yeah, a lot of bait. All right, what do we got on here? Hopefully, we've got a Merry Christmas. Oh, that, is that, that's silver. Is that an epic grunter? Might be a big grunter up hunting on the flats. I hope so. A big grunter or a big brimbo. Oh, <laughs> it's got some grunt. That is cool. Oh, forecast is a bit rainy, but, you know, got to grab those windows of time that you get. So we got this little window of time. Christmas morning, we woke up, everyone's still asleep. <laughs> so why not duck out here for a couple of hours eh, and see if we can get a fish. Oh, come on. Might be a trap, eh? Certainly, certainly pulling off one. I've just done a complete circle. <clears throat> Good fun. Little Akuma Helios SX two to four. Ten pound braid on a little jaw thirty. It is loving it. Yeah, it's a Trev, mate. That's why it's giving me so much stick. He was all over that. Oh come on mate. Oh, come on, buddy. <laughs> Get in the net. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Super stoked. Oh, Merry Christmas, everyone. That's what it's all about.
That's a nice solid little estuary trev. Awesome fun in the yak, awesome fun on light gear. Pinned nicely in the jaw hinge there too. Well, that'll, that'll certainly wake you up. Awesome fish. Little powerhouse. I'll see you, buddy. He's a way to terrorize someone else. All right, this is a bit of a deeper edge. So we're going to switch it up to a curl tail. Just parachute that curl tail down the edge. And then just bounce it around on the bottom a little bit and see if there's a snapper or a big brimbo down there that wants to eat this. Here we go. Oh no, what happened there? On and off. Yeah, pulled the hook on him, eh? Might have been a snapper, picked it up on the bottom. Yep. Oh, bit of bait flicking to the left. That's the other thing to always remember. Oh, where there's bait. It's often one thing that attracts predators, so. We'll get a lure in over where that bait's flicking. The old saying, find the bait, find the fish. So we're always looking out for bait flicking, bait disturbances in the water. Running tide like this, the fish are gonna be up on the flat. The water depth is increasing. They can get up here, they can hunt. But also, they're only in, you know, we're in maybe a meter, max meter and a half of water. So it also restricts the water that the bait fish has to move in. So if predators come up on here, they're not in a big water column, they're on a big flat. So it means that the bait can't run away. It can only run sideways. It can't go up or down or there's less room for it to move. So they can really trap that bait and just smash it up. So generally, if you're getting up on the flat on the last two hours of the run in, the fish are up here actively hunting. They move up here to hunt. And that's why we pretty much just throw lots of long casts, cover plenty of water because there are going to be active fish up here. Some people like to, you know, sit in one little spot and finesse it up a bit more. But I find with flats fishing, it's a good idea just to, good idea just to cover plenty of water until you find the areas that are active. And then you can just come back and drift those active areas again. So we're just drifting with the running tide, working our way along the flat. You know, we might, we got a grunter and a trevally pretty much in quick succession. So we might drift through for another 50 meters and then go, oh, let's go back to where, you know, the fish activity was. And we'll just go back there and hit them up again. But we're just gonna keep rolling in case we find a big school of brim or grunter or, you know, an edge with some flatties on. Just prospecting ground. Oh, there's a bit of action. I just heard something eat over to my left. Something ate right in front of my kayak. That could be Trev's too. Yep. Yep. Just, there's a bit of activity just there, Dad, actually. Just inside us here. That was just a rattle, rattle, rattle hook up. Spinning me right round. What do we got? Brembo. There you go. We've got into an area where there's a little bit of activity. And you got a Brembo. Not a monster. So when I was winding that, 
I was winding and I got bite, 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 bite. And so all I did was keep winding and he ate his way onto that lure. So you can see he's got that 2.5 inch slim swims a long way down in there. And that's because he was chewing on the tail and then he's eating his way up onto the lure and he's found the hook. Only a little fella. So he's around the 27 to the forker, 30 to the tipper. So just a little brimbo, we'll get him back in. We'll try and make the most of this little area that we're in where there's a bit of activity. Often after I get a fish like that, I'll just put a little bit more scent on, just a blob either side of the head. And I like to run that right down to the tail. Get that plastic, get that scent on there. You know, just like that fish then that was going bite, 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 and, and ate its way onto the lure. I reckon if there's scent on there, definitely keep some keep some chewing on it, that's for sure. That's a pretty good little start to the session in quick time. Ronnie kicked it off with a grunter, then we got a Trev, then we got a Brimbo, so. Bit of activity, gotta love these overcast mornings. But a couple of little showers early and could have stayed home in bed. But got up, got out here. And we're catching fish, which is awesome. Some good looking bottom here. You can see on the water surface here, there's a little bit of turbulence and stuff. Oh, there's some action. Yep, 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 yep. You can see the turbulence in that there, meaning there's a bit of structure on the, under the water there. Turbulence on top often means a bit of structure underneath, so it's creating eddies and other water movement that can disorientate bait and fire up the predators. So we're a chance. Find the bait, find the fish, which we've already had. Find the structure, find the fish is the other one people often say. And by finding that turbulent water on the top there, all the water movement, could mean structure underneath, could be weed beds, could be undulations in the bottom, whatever it might be. But hopefully it means fish holding. I'm just keeping an ear out for like any bait move, any bait movement at all. All right, bait disturbance. Was it a Trev? Sometimes those tiny taps turn out to be solid fish, drum tap, those sorts of things. Yep, there he is. That's where that bait disturbance was, eh? <laughs> Pretty solid. It was a nice take. Bit of bait disturbance, flicked over. Had the one tap. Went again, had the second tap. Found the hook that time. Another brimbo. He's not a bad brim either. Not a bad brim up on the flat, so heard that fish bang the bait boof little boof oh there's that guy there you can see a bit smaller fish and he is a little bit more tappy so he hasn't got that plastic as far down in the gob but he's hooked in the corner of the jaw so we're happy with that now it's just that cast of the disturbance give it a couple little shakes and then slow roll it back in again again not a monster He's about a 20. Yeah, around 29 tipper. Only a little fella. Yep. Found a little bit of bait. Yeah, there's a few little bait fish flicking up in there. Find the bait, find the fish, eh? 
No, there hasn't been a lot of bait. <clears throat> yeah, and it's and it's a grunter. That's who I thought I'd find here. Not a monster. Grunter. Oh, 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 come on, buddy. Grunter. Two and a half, two and a half inch slim swims, grunter. Solid fish, they're cool fish. Just a heavy, tough fish. Oh, oh, he's away. Little slim swims, we'll get him back in, see if we can get another one there. A little bit of bait flicking around there, and that's always a good start. Without the bait, often don't find the fish. Sometimes the grunter will just bite fish on. Like tiny taps. Yeah, that's what that was. Yep. Way, yep. Can't avoid. Sometimes they start with tiny taps. That was. And then they get more brutal, eh? Hey? That's exactly what that did. Sometimes they just smash it like that last one I got. <laughs> <laughs> I love that sound. I think you're on the grunter again. Oh no, yours might be a nice brim. I don't know, it's a good uh, it's a, it's a brim bow. It's a solid brim bow. Nice work, mate. I'll come over and ram into you. <laughs> Alright, look right. out. I'm coming over and ram into you.